Right, so Chef Hero, we've known each other for a few years now. I've never gotten you a gift. The only gift we've given each other is just some brotherly love in the kitchen and having a lot of fun in the industry. I was using this torch the other day and I knew you were coming. Uh, this has been in my hands for six years. My father made this sleeve for me. He also made a couple for Chef Jackson over at Omakase. And we don't like to see this ugly container, but I have this for you. Let's we'll put that right there. Wow, that was on mine for six years. Well, not just this, this one can, you know, I've gone through a few for six years. Hopefully it lasts you another 60 years, my chef. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Wow, very, very yes. nice. Now, if you want, you can leave the patina on it and let it go for years. Keeps going because it won't turn any colors if you keep using it. Or if you want to polish it, keep it polished, you won't hurt my feelings. But just remember, there's been a lot of time. This has traveled to Japan with me. This has been to Mexico with me. This has been to the Midwest with me. This has been to LA with me. This has been to New York with me. And Thailand, yes. This wow. has gone all over the world. So now it's yours. Traveling all over the world. For you. Thank, Thank you. you. Wow. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Very, very special here. Very honored to be here with Chef Hero and the team today. Uh, the shop has been here uh, for almost six years, uh, part of the Omakase restaurant group, the butcher shop by Niku Steakhouse. We specialize in Japanese A5 Wagyu, A4, A3, um, off cuts, uh, unique cuts of the Japanese beef, as well as all of our genetics for uh, F1, F4 uh, Wagyu coming out of New South Wales, Australia, uh, that is the Jack's Creek. We also have Robbins Island, which is coming out of Tasmania. That is a full blood program. And our F1 products from the Imperial to the Washugu to the uh, Masami Ranch and a few other handful of products that we get in uh, to our shop. We also feature eighth generation Japanese genetics with our domestic Kurobota pork. That's coming out of Sioux City, Iowa, being raised by Robert Wang and that is the Heritage Berkshire product. We also have Rancho Diez de Siete from Hermosa Lea, Mexico. Uh, that's our Tomahawk program. Uh, and you must remember with each and every one of these different products have traveled to each one of these locations, including Japan and parts all over sourcing these products for our guests here, not only in San Francisco, but people that travel here as a destination butcher shop to take our products elsewhere, which is really an honor that people do travel and come visit. Thank you very much. And I'm honored to have you all here today, as always. Uh, today, uh, we are gonna be uh, featuring a, a couple different products that we're gonna be highlighting. Uh, we're gonna highlight our uh, Japanese A4 olive fed uh, Wagyu ribeye. Uh, that will be for the Philly cheesesteak today. And, Is that uh, a kind of a sin to use this for a Philly cheesesteak? You know, a, a lot of people have asked it's sin, and I think that's a great question. What we're trying to show is that with high-end, high-quality ingredients, if they're treated respectfully and honorably, and all the other components of the product, even though it is a Philly cheesesteak, people might think that that's below or beneath a protein like this. I feel the exact opposite. I actually think it elevates the fact that this beautiful Japanese product can be brought into something American that we are familiar with here in the United States. So this is our West Coast spin on a very East Coast traditional Philly cheesesteak. We take the uh, Fontina miso cheese sauce, we make that here, it's ridiculous. We make a tapenade out of traditional Italian sweet peppers. Uh, we also have a handcrafted roll that we toast with Japanese A5 Wagyu fat that we render here in house. We toast that roll and then we finish that with some flowers at the end. It's always really beautiful. It is a, a very messy food. It's a hands-on food, but it's also a nostalgic food and it's something that people can relate to. I think in the, the food environment that we're in, 
there's nothing wrong with taking a high-end ingredient and doing something respectfully with it. I think it's a, uh, a crowd pleaser, a head turner, and it 100% uh, describes what we're doing here at the butcher shop. So well, it's can, a lot of fun. Yeah, I can tell you one thing. Just as Instagram posts, I've seen that Philly cheesesteak. I'm like, oh my goodness, when are we going to go and get some, right? Now we're here. Now we're here. So dreams, you know. Dreams do come yeah, true. Yeah, come here true. No, come. Now we do the Philly cheesesteak. It's very funny you bring that up. We do that as a supreme drop, which means I only, as you follow on Instagram, what I do is I put it out about every three to four to six weeks, depending on kind of the cadence of when people come in or not. And so uh, on Instagram, I found it, it's drawing people to the butcher shop, not only for the Philly cheesesteak, but it's a gateway drug to get them in to see what kind of butcher shop we actually are. And then they see the burgers, then they see the fries, then they see the Japanese A4, A5, A3, domestic Wagyu, Kurobota pork, dry aged product. I mean, it, everything kind of hits them at once. And then they have this bite and then everything kind of starts to make sense around them of why we're doing everything at a level. And you ask that question, it goes back, lest I digress again, about the product. It's not that we're just doing one thing with an A4 Wagyu Philly cheesesteak. What we're doing is, is showing everybody it's a holistic thing. It's not a one trick pony. It's part of everything we're doing here at the shop. So the respect goes all the way through, from the grill all the way to the front door. Mm. I am so excited to try this. Oh, and your smash burgers that we've had in the past. Oh, unbelievable. They're next level. Yeah. They're crazy. And it's at the end of the day, it's all about the, the animal and how that animal is treated and respected by the farmer. That's where it all starts. Love, care, and respect. And how we bring that in here at the shop, translate that into the raw product of cutting the steaks, describing to the guests what they're eating, how it was sourced, where it was farmed, why it's here, why it's in this shop specifically because of the amount of care that's gone into it. And if they have the time to talk about it, we'll answer the questions, we'll give them cooking tips, cooking instructions. And also, if we don't know any information, we'll go away. I'll take an email address or a phone number. I'll go dig more information with our suppliers, our importers, our exporters, directly to the farm, to the farmers. When I pick up the phone, the farmers literally will pick up the phone. And if it's in Japan, I'll have one of my importer, exporters, give them a call, translate, and it will be a direct conversation. Sometimes we get up in the middle of the night just to get on telephone calls. And I know you know that in your industry, traveling the world, sourcing different products all yeah. over the world. So that's what not only get grounds it, but it, we're very geeky and very intense about it, but it also uh, gives it validity and uh, intensifies the experience. And yes, the customers are coming in here paying a, a very high price financially for these products. I think that they deserve uh, that amount of, of respect that's gone into it, that respect that goes to them. Once we give it to them, we take their money from them and expect them to come, to come back, hopefully. So if we give, curate that experience with every guest, whether it's one hamburger patty or $10,000 worth of product, it's all just as important to us here at the shop. We've yes. got a piece of olive fed from Sanuki, A4 Wagyu, okay. and this is ribeye. And we are going to take this and we are going to trim it up a bit, and then we're gonna slice it for, uh, normally I would slice this for shabu, shabu hot pot, sukiyaki, but we also, uh, Slice it up for the famous A4 Wagyu Philly cheesesteak. So this is the, uh, the rib finger meat here. We'll make a little snack out of this. Normally I would sell these on a, uh, a special skewer for this and call it out as rib finger meat for the guest. They're on every rib. Oh like yeah, that. so the Japanese trim much more intensely than the Americans do, or I think anybody in the world for that matter. You gotta remember that rib meat is the, is very, can be very expensive if you get it up on that ribeye, right? So they sold this rib meat to me at the same price per pound as this was. Oh, wow. So here in the United States, remember that rib meat is right on the right on the beef ribs. Okay. So this is now translated up. So the Japanese are getting the most value out of selling to me. It's not the most value for me, but it's the most value for them. But it makes sense, right? On a business standpoint. We're gonna cut this tail down a little bit.
You kind of inspect that. I'm going to roll it down a little bit more. And you use this for making some kind of Wagyu fat later? Yes, so everything trimmings. gets ground, trimmings ground into our 50-50 uh, Wagyu patties that we use for our smash burgers and also our uh, regular butcher's burgers as well as we sell to our guests. So there is Japanese trim in each and every burger that goes out of the shop. There's not much to this one, it's in pretty good shape. So we're gonna go ahead and just slice this up for, uh, for Shabu here. You can see that the piece is kind of the way it's it's cut. It might not translate on the camera, but it's it's kind of angled and blocked. This is the beauty of Japanese Wagyu right here. This is kind of the fun part. It can be manipulated because it's so dense. So what we're gonna do, so I get nice, clean, even slices. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of leveling out that face. And I'm gonna level out this face. that's going to get us right where we want to be. So it's going to be a nice even cut all the way through. We put uh, five ounces on each sandwich, which translates in, depending on the eye, translates into about four or five slices. As I was talking about, this is my dojo studio. I'll tell you, this is where we do what we do. Uh, nobody does this alone. Now I could go over here and, and cook this, but I have a, a student who's also uh, been my master as well. This is uh, Chef Mel, and he's taught me so much, uh, as well as Chef Mateo has uh, over, over the years. Watching him work on the flat top and his uh, passion uh, for making burgers fries, uh, Philly cheesesteaks, the other specials we do. We don't make burgers and fries here. We're selling memories. We're making memories. We're making experiences. We're making something that comes from our hearts and putting that into somebody and try to touch their soul. So I could go over here and cook this right now, but I have the master on our grill, and that is Chef Mel. He is here, and he is here for one reason. He is a slayer on that flat top. So we're gonna hand this over to Chef Mel. You do your thing. Yeah, All right. Pure Japanese A5 Wagyu fat that we render in house. What tempo are we running here? Cook yourself. Right here is going to be a little hot. So we are on like 400 or 450 degrees. 400 or 450, okay. So we're going to get that really quick sear, so nothing more than maybe 30 seconds on that sear. Okay. So here you are, beautiful Philly cheesesteak from the butcher shop. I'm going to tell you something. I have never seen anything so decadent when it comes to a sandwich. Even just a regular steak with cheese on it. This is unbelievable. But the best part is we're going to try it. So today, I gotta tell you, it's like I said earlier, it's an honor to have you guys here, but it is mind numbing to me that we've taken this A4 Philly cheesesteak sandwich that we've had some fun with here in the shop. 
and our guests really enjoy. We have Chef Hero here today, and he's going to be making an A4 Philly cheesesteak sushi roll. I mean, come on, mind blown, right? I don't, I don't even know what to say. I, this is the first time, I, I don't even know what to say. I can't wait to see it. Chef Hero, take it away. Let's see what you can do. Well, let's also say that these are your wonderful products that you've put all together. Oh, yeah, yeah. but no, but I mean, it's just the, the pure simple fact that He's thinking so far out of the box, he's going to make a roll out of it. Yeah. Come on, you know? That wasn't even a thought in my brain. Not in my brain. That means I need to stay closer to you, you know? Put the brains together, <laughs> right? All right. Here, son, what a beautiful creation! Check this out. Oh, my goodness! This is supposed to be we should call Sendai cheese steak. You got to just Sendai. The Sendai, okay, not a Philly, not Philly, <laughs> best of these, right? Right, <laughs> Sendai cheese steak. And thank you so much yeah. to this gentleman, Chef Guy. Thank you so much for oh having us. Oh, my gosh, what, what am I supposed to do with this? We're incredible gonna taste it later, yeah, creation. right? The final product and tasting part. All right, thank you yes. so much, Chef All Mel. Right. Of course, hero -san, Chef Kai, and Chef Mateo. You. you guys are the bomb. Check out Guy's Instagram account for the Butcher Chop. Truly amazing. When you guys see it, you're going to want to run down here, just like we did, all the way from the 305. All right, gentlemen, please enjoy. I'm going to grab this part. This is the one I've been looking at. So let's <laughs> okay. see. Let's see. Let's see. All right, let's see. This is going to be best mess. Let's see. One shot. Oh, one oh, shot. shot. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Good? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> it's great. Great. Wow. Wow, Thank Chef. Thank Amazing. And so with the rice, it gives it a different flavor. Kind of like steak with, and rice, right? Well, be with better. that little bit of sushi uh, vinegar in the rice. Yeah. Definitely adds a little complexity. Gets into the cheese a little bit. You taste the cheese. And of course, the meat just kind of falls in there. The rice and the meat really blend together well. And right. then you start, as it goes away, you start to taste all the components, the cheese, the Italian sweet peppers, everything that's in there. It's it's pretty amazing, the onions, it's it's there. It's beautiful. And then of course, you get that umami pop coming out of that seaweed. Oh my gosh, takes things like another level up. It just keeps coming. Yeah, once you get the bite, it it, it's, it lingers. Yes, chef. Thank you. Nice, nice. All right, here's Han, you must try. You too. Okay, go ahead, Chef Mel. Yes, yeah, Chef Mateo. See what you guys think of this. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, chef. Dangerous. Huh? Mm -hmm. Evil. Oh, wow. One by. One by, right? Oh. One by, one by. Let's take a cross section. Take a look at this. Wow. Okay, Hiro san, what you created with the most amazing products here at the butcher shop. Beautiful olive fed wagyu, A4. And beef bacon on top, that's what I'm calling it now. Enjoy. Zizakamas. Heaven, huh? Like one of my favorite foods in the world, Philly cheese cheesesteak is just. And here, another level. <laughs> You guys are the best. Thank, thank you so much, all of you. Thank the you. team here, thank I'm you so much for having us. I'm having a good time. And thank you so much for the gift for Chef Hero. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. It's my honor, my pleasure. Thank you, Chef. It's a privilege to stand next to you, Chef. Thank you. All right, thank you.